So what architects basically do is design environments for people. I would say an architect is someone who designs buildings that are both experientially rich as well as functional. Creative ideas about putting together the needs of people and making them spatial and accommodating them in built environments. The context and cultural factors behind how that building is sitting in its place, the site factors, um, the intentions of the client. Architecture is kind of where science and art and social science all come together. I think an architect is responsible for, for understanding what a building is communicating to the public. I, th I think a lot of people wouldn't think of architecture as a STEM field. This central courtyard space became, started to become um, extremely tight to the point where not a lot of light was getting in there. We are using math and physics to understand the principles of, of gravity. So here we have a space created by uh, two rows of, of vertical columns. Use it for you know, cues in the building for uh, movement or um, to create different zones or spaces for people to inhabit. We kind of apply all that science, technology, engineering, and math. But we have a nice big dose of art and creativity and critical thinking in there. So architecture, in the end, becomes a discipline that is applied STEM and more. It, it often makes sense to align an opening like that along a structural edge, mm -hmm. but what that means is you're probably going to add some element of structure here mm -hmm. on this side. So in this case you have a mass wall, so that's not a problem. When you get into here, you may think about adding structure. To get into architecture, you have to have the full four units of math plus a unit of physics. Uh, any, any student coming into our program would certainly be expected to be very comfortable with trigonometry. You could look at this system starting to take over the structural definition of that. Yeah. In calculating any sort of triangular relationship within a building, we often have one variable and we need to understand how to use trigonometry to set dimensions. Incoming freshmen will also have had a full calculus class. Um, you don't take calculus or physics in school. You're going to take structures, which is like applied physics, which is applied math. The angles that you study in trigonometry is really the basis of what we do when we build high rises like Queen City Square or stadiums like Paul Brown. We're continually challenged and fighting with gravity, but I also think it can be a real inspiration for designers. It's, a, it's got three walls that are connected. So this is very stable, and this is also triangulated. This is very stable. Mm -hmm. And the forces that come from here or here are triangulated back down to the ground. Yep. So we're good there. Yep. But in this direction, you can see that the base is extremely narrow, so there's not a lot of material resisting any movement in that direction. First, we have to understand the concept, and then when we get to the design problem, we try to use you know, triangulation which incorporates trig, sines, cosines, tangents, etc., circles, to figure out how large this is, what do we need to support it, and will, you know, will I be able to walk underneath that thing you just made? Or will I be able to fit this piece of furniture in? You've got to use all of that. There are so many different disciplines and fields that support the built environment. The majority of people who work at architecture firms are not licensed architects. There are the architects whose primary responsibility is the idea of a building envelope. I work regularly with interior designers, with landscape architects, with urban designers. On the other end of the spectrum is engineering. Much more math and science, much more logic. We have project managers and construction managers who are also part of our, our daily existence and our work as architects. Who makes sure that all of these pieces go together and the price comes in on budget and on time and helps support the client. Help our clients understand the most efficient ways to build their buildings as well as the most efficient ways to operate those. Energy analysis, sustainability evaluation, 
um, cost assessment. We're managing uh, the conversations between the architect, the engineer, and the person who's actually putting it in. I'm tracking everything for the owner on paper. I think if there wasn't a project engineer on the project, then the budget either could be way offline or you'd have someone that may not necessarily know construction, reviewing pricing, and or putting it into a budget for the owner and, and being completely off. We have uh, organizations such as the United States Green Building Council um, that has developed a building rating system called LEED, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. Have a much um, lighter impact on the em environment. It's always beneficial to be accountable for the decisions that we're making as designers. The whole concept of sustainability with regard to construction is really um, thinking about designing buildings that are energy efficient, that reduce carbon footprint, they have good indoor air quality. Um, it's especially important in K-12 buildings. Those who are trained in design um, often have something that can be beneficial to people who can't afford design. Some humanitarian work happens locally, but also work abroad. We have more and more designers and architects who are working for communities across the world. You know, I'll admit right here, I was a pretty mediocre high school student at the end. I had some kind of an idea of what an architect does, but it was of no interest to me whatsoever. So I sat there and I thought, okay, well, I like science and math, and I seem to be okay at that. I love art, and I really want to work with people and help people solve problems. It's just, you know, putting your mind to it and your attention and your interest. I never got better at school than I did once I found what I loved because I couldn't imagine doing anything else. <laughs>